For today's Nan Bob Farm, we're actually going to a different farm. Andrea Bushry is taking us to Apsi Farms to see how things work there. All right, welcome back. We are here at Apsi Farms. This is Kyle Apsi, and he's just going to give us kind of a rundown of their farm, and um, yeah, we'll just see where we go. We're a Centennial Farm. We've been around for over 100 years. I'm the fourth generation, fortunate to be born and raised on the farm. Yeah. And I guess for the longest time, I've always been more of a hobby farm. Okay. Where we've always had cattle for, well, since my great grandpa, I believe he walked his cows up as a story from Grand Rapids. <laughs> That's awesome. And he uh, started with five, five head. Okay. And we've kind of been growing it ever since with cattle. Yeah. And then about five years ago, I moved back from the big city of Chicago. Okay. I got really passionate about pasture-raised beets and grass-fed beef. Yeah. And was able to convince my dad on the <laughs> health benefits of going 100% grass-fed yeah. for the beef and then got into the power of regenerative agriculture and rotational grazing. I just noticed the, the real need, especially in the cities, for people mm. that want to have a connection with their farmer, Yeah. but they don't necessarily have the means to, run the, to grow their own food yeah. and do it themselves. And it can be challenging to find a, a good farmer that you trust in the area, to go to the farmer's market every weekend. Yeah. We can deliver pasture-raised meats and now mm. eggs directly yeah. to your door. How did you get to regenerative agriculture? What got you in this space? Good question. <laughs> I think couple of, well quite a few different resources number one is probably the University of YouTube yeah there's so many like once you get into <laughs> the grass fed beef then you start going down the rabbit hole of regenerative agriculture and mm -hmm. rotationally grazing livestock yeah so we talked about how your farm has always had cattle how have you incorporated the chickens and various different kinds of poultry operations on the farm or why even yeah good yeah. question so cattle have always been our, our keystone enterprise and you realize that they provide such a tremendous benefit to the soil. Mm -hmm. And we like to think of our cattle as kind of our grounds crew, as you can kind of <laughs> see in the background, where instead of us having to get the tractors out and cut hay, you gotta go through and rake it and bale it and then fertilize it too with synthetic fertilizers mm -hmm. and inputs. We instead like to manage and use the livestock as our tool, the best tool possible to do that f work for us. Yeah. And that also allows us to get rid of all the chemical inputs and synth synthetic fertilizers. Mm -hmm. And then once you have cattle, you realize they provide a tremendous asset and benefit to the fields, but you could do even more if you had complementary enterprises in livestock like chickens. Yeah. Because chickens are really rich in nitrogen rich manure, mm -hmm. which does amazing things to the field. But the issue is if you leave these livestock in one space mm -hmm. over time, they turn it into dirt and they just love the mud and whatnot. Yeah. So they can be very destructive. Yeah. So the whole goal is to manage the livestock so they all work together mm -hmm. synergistically. Yeah. And by rotationally moving them around your fields, you can build more soil over time. You can reduce all of your synthetic inputs and, and chemicals and use these livestock to do the work for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And I think uh, next week we'll be uh, tuning in to the rest of the farm and actually getting to see these practices in motion. Um, and you'll actually get to see how different the grasses are from where they were to where they're going. Um, so yeah, stay tuned next week for our next segment on AFC Farms. <laughs> 